Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Real Estate Conveyance Webinar presented by the State of Connecticut Department of Revenue Services. We are happy you have decided to include us as part of your Wednesday morning here in the first week of September. My name is Richard Carter, and I'll be navigating your way through today's webinar, and we have a lot on tap for you. First, you'll hear from Melissa Pescatelli. Melissa is going to talk about DRS and what we've been up to of late. Then Catherine Zanger will be here, and she will provide information about the real estate conveyance tax. After that, Randy Hara Prasad will break down our new online portal, MyCTREC, with a live demonstration. Then we're going to do a real quick tour of the Taxpayer Education Center, and we'll finish things off with a Q&A of the questions you previously submitted regarding the real estate conveyance tax and my CT rep. Now that's the rundown, that's the batting order, and that's what we have in store for you. Now, in case you didn't know, the old portal, EREC, well, that's a thing of the past, and it's been replaced by my CT rep. Now, my CT rec has several new features that improve the electronic filing and reviewing experience for real estate conveyance submitters and town clerks. And I'm just going to tease you with a couple before we get going here. First, the portal's designed to be mobile device friendly, which means you can log into my CT rec from your phone. And my CT rec also allows submitters and town clerks to send and receive secure web messages. It's like a direct line to DRS, ship the shore communications, if you will. Therefore, we highly encourage all town clerks to sign up for my CT rec so that all submitters will be able to file and pay the form OP236 online. And we're gonna to get to all of that in just a second. But first, before we get going, I wanna give you our contact information that way once this is over, and maybe if you have a question regarding the real estate conveyance tax or perhaps another tax, sales and use, withholding, corporation, income tax, you can contact us. And in order to do that, we can do it by phone. Our phone numbers are 860-297-5962. We're also at 1-800-382-9463. You want to send us an email? Go for it. Our email address is drs at ct.gov. If you want to visit our website, our website is located at portal.ct.gov forward slash drs. One more time for the folks in the back who may not have heard me on that one, portal.ct.gov forward slash drs. Yes. And also check us out on social media. We're available on Facebook, X, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. All right, so the pregame show is over. First up is Melissa Pescatelli. Melissa is the tax division chief of our taxpayer services division, and she's going to share some information about the agency. Good morning, Melissa. I trust your commute in this morning was fantastic. As always, Mr. Carter, and thank you so much for that warm introduction. Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Department of Revenue Services Real Estate Conveyance Tax Webinar. I am Melissa Pescatelli, the Department's Director of Taxpayer Services. It is our pleasure to bring this event to you today, which will provide you with important information that will help you succeed in filing real estate conveyance tax returns. We have some very knowledgeable team members with us today who will provide you with an overview of the real estate conveyance tax filing requirements, including how to create a profile on MyCTREC, showing you the different access types available in MyCTREC, filing OP236, the real estate conveyance tax return electronically using MyCTREC, finding important information on the DRS website, and so much more. The department has modernized its electronic filing platforms, making it easier than ever before for town clerks and submitters to file returns to report real estate conveyance tax, tra tax transactions. It's simple to create a profile on the department's safe and secure online platform called MyCTREC. After setting up a profile, town clerks will be able to file real estate conveyance tax returns and manage state tax matters using the submission panel on MyCTREC. They can do that 24 hours, seven, seven days a week, day or night. I encourage you to check out MyCTREC and make the department's website a favorite on your device. 
This will make it easy for you to check back often for any tax updates and developments that may impact your filings. Now, with the goal of providing world-class customer service, the department has recently hired a team of consumer information representatives to answer any questions that you may have with any of your tax filing or payment matters. These friendly and knowledgeable employees stand ready to assist you Monday through Friday between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. They can help you with any questions that you may have, such as how do I set up a profile? How do I change my demographic information? How can I view previous filed returns and payments using my CT rate? How do I send a web message to DRS? Where can I find updates on the Taxpayer Education Center? You can reach our consumer information staff at 860-297-5962. Again, thank you for attending our webinar this morning. Remember that the staff at the department stand ready to help and will be important resource for your success. Mr. Carter, now back over to you. All right, thank you very much, Melissa. Wheels are up and we are off, fantastic. All right, folks, still to come is the demo of my CT Rec, the tour of the Taxpayer Education Center and the Q&A. But first, let's bring to the microphones Catherine Zandri. She's here to provide some exciting information about the real estate conveyance tax. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning, Mr. Carter, and thank you for that welcome. However, before you leave, I have a one question quiz for you. Just one question. Now, oh. the real estate conveyance tax started as a municipal tax in 1967. Do you, Mr. Carter, know the original intent or purpose for instituting the municipal real estate conveyance tax? Uh, let's see. I feel like I'm a cash cab. Uh, do I get a shout out at all here? No, no I shout out, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, uh, I would say uh, let's go with uh, education. Well, one legislature had hoped that the revenues generated from the tax would be used by the town to purchase open space or parks. So that's the Boiled answer. again. And it is educational to learn. So good try. All right. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Onward and upward. As I stated, the real estate conveyance tax started as a municipal tax in 1967. 16 years later, in 1983, the tax was expanded to include a tax payable to the state and to the municipality. State law generally requires a person recording a deed in the town land records to file a real estate conveyance tax return, OP. 236, the form is known as. Tax may be due if consideration is greater than $2,000 or the transfer is not exempt. The seller, referred to as grantor on the form, must pay the tax before the deed can be recorded on the land records of the city or town. There is a real estate conveyance tax due to the state and a separate real estate conveyance tax due to the municipality. The state tax rates vary and are dependent upon the consideration received for the type of property conveyed. Please check with your local municipality for the municipal tax rate. If filing on my CT rec, the tax will be transmitted directly to the state as part of the filing process. After filing and receiving a confirmation from my CT rec, the town clerk will have the ability to view the return and confirm that the state tax was paid. Who must file and when to file the real estate conveyance tax form? Well, grantors, known as sellers, or their authorized representative must file the OP-236. Now, the authorized representative can be an attorney or an authorized agent. Now, when is the OP-236 to be filed? It must be filed at the time the deed or instrument that conveys the property is recorded town land records by the town clerk. How must one file? Well, ideally, it would be through the MyCT Rec electronically program. However, there are some municipalities that are still not participating, but those participating municipalities can conveniently file the return from their office computer and a list of participating municipalities will appear in an upcoming slide. Now, the other method of filing is paper form, and we have a fillable form on our website, and I'll go over those forms in a moment with you and where to find them. So you can fill out the form from our website, but you must print it out, and it can be either mailed or hand-carried into the town 
clerk's office for recording. Separate checks as payment for both the state and the municipality's portion of the tax must accompany the filing of the OP-236. Of course, the form and supporting fillable forms are available on the DRS website. The list will appear on the next screen. So if you go to our website, https portal.ct.gov forward slash DRS, you can find the OP-236. That's the real estate conveyance tax return and the OP-236I, which are the instructions for said form. And the AU-263, real estate conveyance tax allocation worksheet. Now you would use this worksheet to allocate the total consideration for property that may be located in more than one municipality. Currently, the OP-236 has two fields for grantor names and grantee names. However, you may have a transaction that involves more than two grantors. So we have OP-236 Schedule A, a supplemental info sheet for additional grantors to be listed. And the same for the grantees, that would be OP-236 Schedule B. Now, the question is, are there any exemptions from transactions? Uh, involving the real estate conveyance tax. Yes, ta the law allows uh, various types of transactions from exemptions from the state and local tax, including the following, transfers between spouses, conveyances pursuant to certain court decrees, including as a result of an annulment, a dissolved marriage or legal separation, or also foreclosure by sale, transfers of property to an any nonprofit organization organized to hold undeveloped land in trust for conservation or recreation purposes, deeds made pursuant to corporate mergers, transfers of a principal residence where the gross purchase price is less than the total amount the seller still owes on the property for mortgages and tax liens. We've often used the term or heard of the term short sale, and that's what that means. And last but not least, transfers of certain principal residences with concrete foundations that have deteriorated due to the presence of paratite. Now, a full list of conveyance tax exemptions is available in DRS's conveyance tax return instructions. What are the advantages of filing OP-236 on my CT rec? Well, convenience for filing and paying electronically. Also, you have a much more accurate result. With the paper form, it's easy to skip over a field, forget to check a box, you've hand carried it into the town clerk's office or mailed it in, and information is missing. Where my CT rec immediately lets you know what field has not has been passed over or needs require requires attention, needs additional attention. You receive immediate confirmation that the transmission has been received. You can view your return and payment history at any time. And the safe and secure filing environment in which to send secure messages and view your information. It's quick and easy for town clerks to approve or reject form OP-236. Now the real estate conveyance tax return we refer to it quite often, OP-236 can only be filed through my CT rec by the participating municipalities that you see on the screen. For information on why a particular town is not a my CT rec participating municipality, please contact the town clerk of that community. The, the participation may require approval by the town's administration. A link to the participating towns can be found on the main page of my CT rec. At this time, I turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Carter. No more quizzes. <laughs> well, thank you, Catherine. Don't go anywhere just yet, though. Uh, but I appreciate that you're not giving me a quiz. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to reciprocate here. 
Still to come, folks, is the tour of the Taxpayer Education Center and the Q&A. Uh, right now, we're waiting for Randy. He seems to be stuck in internet traffic. So, Catherine, if you're still out there, please join me again. I've got a question for you, actually. Back in 1968, there was one town that took in in the first six months of the real estate conveyance tax. I'll give you a I'll tell you the town and I'll give you three figures upon which to choose from that you think is the accurate amount. Now, the town of Torrington in the first six months of 1968 took in either $7,039, $6,500, or $8,202. Which one do you think it is? I'm going to go with eight. That's a lucky number for me. So. 8,000 and whatever the resulting. <laughs> I wasn't prepared a, for this quiz. Oh, go ahead. That's a great guess. That's a well thought out guess, but it's wrong. <laughs> the actual amount, the, if you had guessed $7,039, you would have been accurate. Isn't that what I said? $7,039? No, you went with $8,002, oh, whatever that. You geez. fell for the bait when I paused on that one. Oh, so it's 7000 Thirty-nine dollars is is what it was for the first six months of the real estate. I found that actually this morning in the old Hartford Current Archives, actually uh, oh, of all places. So, what do you make of that? Interesting. It is very interesting. It is to yeah. learn what the intent was behind, which was admirable: purchasing open space or parks. And hopefully, Torrington did that. I'm sure they put it to very good use, though. I'm sure they did. I would have thought for certain it would, because everything is, and I don't mean in a bad way, but everything seems like it's it's geared towards a, a, education. So I don't know if over the years they they changed it too, and they, oh. you know, they move the money around. That that I don't know. Absolutely. Well, shout out to hopefully our Torrington town clerk is on today, and if not, that's okay. Shout out to the town clerks anyway. Yeah, and uh, I'm sorry, but you don't get any. Um, uh, prizes, consolation prizes. There's no year supply of turtle wax. There's nothing like that. You, you well, don't even get a home I version. I'm you don't even get a home version a of the game. Jeopardy. We're just going to escort you out of the building. How's that? That's something. Yes. Yes. So as we as we wait for Randy's appearance, folks, if you're out there, you certainly can visit our website. There's lots of information that that is out on our website. I was going to promote it uh, later in the webinar, but I'm not going to do that. I'll kind of move that up to the front of the line now. So if by chance you end up out at our website, which is located at portal.ct.gov forward slash DRS, there's lots of information out there. We've got policy statements out there. We've got information publications. Obviously, there's forms, there are instructions. If you want to do do a deep dive into things, there's those, those take two. Those are out there as well. We also have some instructional videos that are out there, and I'll get to that in a, in a few minutes as well. Let's see, if you go out to YouTube, you'll start to see we're starting to do more content as there as well. You might have seen a promo we did for, the, for My Connect. We have done one in the past for income tax and sales and use tax. So we are trying to use more video as a means to uh, get our message out and also educate taxpayers as well and tax preparers. We did one on landscaping and I think we have a couple plans coming up for construction and pool maintenance and those type of things. So those are on the docket. Uh, they're in the preparation stage. So hopefully we can get those out there in the next couple of weeks or months. Well, I'm just about ready to close up my pool. So that would be helpful to know. <clears throat> And as I'm sure others are too. Yeah, so um, I was uh, so. trying to secure a pool and uh, two employees volunteered their pools, but only if they could push me in. And I'm not quite sure <laughs> how to take that. Can't so, imagine why. Can't I can't imagine, imagine why. why either. I just, we're going <laughs> to just shoot at a pool and let folks need to know what they need to know about sales tax when it comes to uh, taking care of your pool. Somehow it turned That's into right. me getting wet. That's right. Well, landscaping could have uh, could have been an interesting topic. At least nobody offered to dig a hole for you. Uh, for, right. All right. So here's here's what we're going to do, Catherine. As we're still waiting for Randy, let's uh, let's get to the Q and A. Let's cut to the chase of the matter here, and we'll get some uh, questions and answers in, and hopefully we can get the technical problems uh, regarding Randy uh, resolved. How does that sound Sounds to you? Sounds good. Sounds good to me. All right, good, because I've about talked out as much as I can on videos. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All 
All right, here we go. All right. You ready, Catherine? I am. Okay. Ready, Sophie? All right. You got 14 questions here, folks. So the first question is, what is my CT rec? Well, my CT rec that we've been speaking about is the Connecticut Department of Revenue Services new mobile friendly online portal for submitters and town clerks to manage the real estate conveyance taxes 24 hours a day, seven days a week. My CT rec provides faster, easier, and more accurate results than paper processing methods. Fantastic. All right. So what exactly are the benefits then of my CT rec? Well, it's the most accurate way to file your return because errors are reduced. The system does the calculations for you, ensures that all required information or fields are filled and included. You receive a confirmation number that will ensure that the DRS receives your submission and you can view your return and payment history at any time. All right, we're off and running. Two in the book so far. Fantastic. All right. Next question for you. Is my CT rec a secure website? Absolutely. It was designed using up to date security technology and use utilizes. This might not make sense to a lot of people, but for those in the computer world, it utilizes SHA 512 encryption to ensure the privacy of your transactions. Additionally, the logon and user authentication areas are designed to ensure that users can access their tax filing information in a secure environment. Very important. Okay, uh, this is a logical follow up question then. So, how does my CT rec keep my information safe? Well, we, um, your information is safe and private secure by using multiple security layers within the application. And my CT rec will also log you out automatically after 15 minutes of inactivity. All right, very good. Question number five, can I file a return electronically if I don't have a my CT rec account? Unfortunately not. In order to file returns online, you must create a my CT rec username and login in the system. All right. Now I know this next question. I know this has happened to me, not with my CT rec, but in other things that I'm involved in. This is a good question too. So I was locked out of my CT rec. How do I unlock the account? Well, the good news is the account will automatically unlock after one hour. However, if you're, if you're in a bit of a rush and you can't wait that long, please call DRS and an examiner can unlock the account for you. All right, very good. All right, so this brings us to the halfway point with question number seven, I believe. I am trying to create a profile on my CT rec. Why won't it accept my username? Well, usernames Rick, are limited to one username per person or profile. So you'll not be able to use the same username that's already being used for another profile. However, the same email address is allowed for multiple profiles and usernames. You know, these are all really good questions, and, yeah. and uh, here's another one, actually. Um, what access types are available in my CT rec? Well, there are two access types, either submitters or town clerks. Submitters can file form OP236 for a Connecticut real estate conveyance. You'll be able to, to electronically submit the form and any applicable payment electronically to the associated town clerk. And the town clerk participation allows access for the town clerk to review and approve electronically the filed Connecticut real estate tax return submitted through the Department of Revenue Services, my CT rec portal for your community. Okay, excellent. Uh, what if I don't have an email address? Well, an email address is required. So if you don't have a personal email address, you can sign up for one for a free account with websites such as Gmail, Hotmail, and Yahoo, to name a few. All right, very good, very good. All right, question number 10. Can a business have multiple persons with usernames in my CT rec? Yes, each authorized person should follow the steps required to create their own username for my CT rec. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, excellent. All right, here's another one for you. 
I have created a MyCTREC username and password. Why can't I log in? Well, your request must first be reviewed and approved by DRS before you can log into MyCTREC. You will receive an email notification from DRS once your request has been approved. Before that, you're not going to be able to log in until you receive that email. Okay, very good. What is the submission panel? Now, I know some of you may not have seen this, so you're gonna this question everyone's gonna have to like catch up to. So uh, anyway, again, what is the submission panel? Well, when Randy gives his demonstration, you'll see the submission panel at that time, you'll view it. It's a feature of my CTREC where you can view historical data such as prior filings and payments made. DRS refers to the filings and payments as submissions. All right, excellent. We're down to the final two. So let's discuss secure messages for a second. How exactly do I send a secure message? Okay, this once again will make more sense when you see Randy's demonstration, but you would perform the following steps. You'd log into my CTREC, locate the correspondence group, and click the send a message hyperlink. Select the message area, for instance, the topic or subject. It could be an account or payment or billing. Choose one of those message areas and the category. Enter the subject and the message, and you can also add attachments to the message if you feel that it's important to do so. Once you're satisfied with your message, simply click Submit. Just as easy as that. Okay, very good. And here is the last question, number 14. How do I update my profile information? Well, once again, you're gonna log into my CTREC, click the Manage My Profile Information hyperlink. From the Profile tab, locate the information you wish to update. Click the applicable hyperlink, such as update name or change email, edit my phone number, etc. Enter the updated information and click OK. That's simple. And I have no doubt that Randy's going to review this in his yes. demonstration. And speaking of the aforementioned Randy, I believe he is now here. So thank you, Catherine, for improvising, adapting, and overcoming uh, <laughs> with me You're for this welcome. part. Uh, so let's bring Randy in. I don't know if he got caught up in the witness protection program or something or if he went missing, but uh, Everyone here is Randy Harapersard, and what Randy is going to do, he is going to educate us all on my CT rec by burrowing and nesting inside there and giving us one of his uh, excellent demonstrations. Hello, Randy. It's good to see you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Please let me know when you can see my screen. Everything looks good. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Randy Harry Prasad, and today we will be demoing, as you hear a lot about my CT rec and the OP236 filing. And today I'll show you how easy it is to get in there and set up yourself as a submitter or a town clerk and how to get the process going. So first, as you can see on my screen, this is the my CT rec homepage. To get here, you can do a few things. You can go to Google, type in My City Rec, Connecticut Department of Revenue Services, pull that up, or you can go to our DRS homepage. And under most popular, you will see the My City Rec hyperlink there, and you click on that, and that will bring you to the My City Rec homepage. Here's some information for uh, if you wanted to know for participating municipalities, what you can do is just click into this hyperlink and this will give you a list of the town that's participating with us. And as you scroll down, you will see the ones that's checked off is um, signed up with us. So you can know if your town is um, participating in the program. Okay, I'm gonna just go back out of here. And before we start, I do wanted to show you a few um, important panels that we do have on this homepage that will assist you. For example, if you need to make a payment, let's say if your payment got rejected when you filed the OP236 return and you wanted to make a payment, you will simply come here, click on make a payment. It will ask you for a letter ID, which is provided on the bill that we sent 
the department sent to um, your address at home. You can use that letter ID and you can make the bill payment. Any prior submission, you can go and find a submission here under the submission panel. Uh, this panel here, tutorials, we do have, uh, it's important, you know, it's, it, you know, you'll file useful. It says, how do I create a username for the first time? And if you click on more tutorials, it will take you to the DRS homepage. I mean, one of the DRS homepage, and you will be able to see a lot more tutorials there. We also have some additional resources here, like make a warrant payment. This We also have a link that will take you to My Connect uh, for filing uh, individual income taxes and, and businesses. Um, on a daily basis, so that will take you to my connect. We also have some other important um, hyperlinks here. All right, let's go back here and before we logged in, so I already created a username and password. So today demo, I'll show you, um, I will act as uh, two separate sites here. I'm gonna act as a submitter. Um, so submitter is the one that filed the OP236 and then I'll act as the tongue clerk where they come in in their system and they either approve or reject the OP236. So I'm gonna start out to show you, um, to create a username, you click on the create a username hyperlink here, and then you will select your access type. Again, if you're a submitter and you're filing the OP236, you will select submitter, create a username and password, and you're able to get in right away with your username and password and file the OP236. As a tongue clerk, if you wanted to create a username and password for the first time as a tongue clerk, you will do so by clicking, uh, selecting the tongue clerk uh, radio button here. But however, the tongue clerk um, application needs to approve, which can take anywhere um, within 48 hours uh, to get back a reply from the department saying you're approved. So once you click the click on um, the tongue clerk, created the, the profile and submitted to DRS. Um, we will go ahead, look at your Tom Clark application and then approve your request. Okay, so first what we'll start, we'll start out by, I'm not gonna go ahead and create, I'm not gonna go and create a username and password because that's, you know, it's very simple to cr create a profile for the username and password. So I'm gonna cancel out of here and I'm gonna return by going in as a, so I'll start out by logging in as a submitter and we will start filing the OP236 form. So I am going to go ahead, enter my username. And then I'll enter my password. But before I log in, I wanted to also point out that forget username and password. So for example, if you, um, you know, you forget your username and password, you can do so by clicking on the forget username and password hyperlink and you should be able to enter either your use, your email address to get your username, or you can enter your username to get your, um, to reset your password. And uh, the email address that you provided when you create the profile, you will receive that uh, e an email with the temporary password link to create a, a, a password. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click login. And the first screen when you logged in, you will get a two-step verification. This is just an extra layer for your account. Um, you can either set it up by adding a phone number or an email, or you can set up the authentication app. Or let's say if you let's say you know you don't really need the two-step verification, the extra layer of security, then you can simply click the disable button here, and this will disable um, this option here for you. But don't worry if you let's say you come back next week and you said I do want it to set up the two-step verification process. How do I get there? I will show you once I logged in. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and click disable, and I says yes and now I'm in my CT rec. So for you to set up the, um, the two-step verification process, you click on manage my profile, and then you can, under here, you will see that says manage two-step uh, verification, and this is where you are able to um, enable the uh, the two-step verification again. Under manage my profile, you can you know make a name change, email address, phone numbers, or you can update your password or your security questions. Just going to return back out here. 
And as a submitter, as you can see, when I logged in, I have the option to file the OP236. I can find any prior submission, any historical uh, returns or payments as submitted. You can uh, find them under submissions. You can correspond with DRS uh, Secure by um, sending a message, or you can view any prior message in here. So let's get started by filing the OP236. I'm going to go ahead and click file OP236, and this will bring me to the form. The form is very uh, easy to um, fill out, so I'm going to go ahead and start entering my information. This is not an amended return. I'm going to go ahead and select the, it's, this is important because you have to select the property city. If not, then what's if you select the incorrect one that you're filing for in the drop down, then the town clerk is not going to get that information to either approve or uh, reject the filing. So, for example, I selected, if I remember, Plainfield. So I'm going to look for Plainfield. So I was able to find my property city. Now I'm going to go ahead and enter the location of the property and I'm going to say no to that. Was there more one deed file conveyance? No, and there is no gift return. OK, now I'm going to go ahead and click next. Before I get more into the return, I do wanted to point out a cool feature that uh, my city rec has to offer, and that is the save draft feature. So as you're filing the OP236 return, and let's say if you don't have all the information to complete the return, and you're like, oh shoot, I'll lose all my data. I don't start all over again. Don't worry. There's a save draft feature here. If you click on the save draft feature, what's going to happen is you can save the return for 30 business days. When it's close to 30 business days, you will get an email reminder in your inbox saying, hey, Randy, you have a OP236 saved. If you would like to complete it, log in and complete the filing. Or if you don't need to complete the filing, you don't need to do anything, the system will automatically wipe it out after 30 business days. So for now, I'm not going to say finish later. I'm going to say continue editing. And I'm back into the return. Enter the number of grantors. I have one. Grantor ID, I'm going to go ahead and enter federal ID. I'm going to enter the seller's name. And the address. OK, and then I'm going to go ahead and enter the town here, Hartford, zip code. And then I need to verify the address. So this is a good thing that we do do verification of addresses in here. And this is the correct address. Now I'm going to say yes. And then I'm going to click next. And now I'm in the grantee information section. Number of grantee is one. The address information is not required. It's just tell us how many grantees needed. And then I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now on, on the conveyance information, where the date conveyed. So I'm going to enter the date conveyed. So this was conveyed on the 2nd of September. And the type of instrument I will use in this example will be warranty. And here again, if you have any exemption, you just check the box. So this way, when you get to the payment part, the system will automatically calculate the exemption and the exemption code that you choose. For example, if you need a list of exemption you can click here and this will open up a page for you and it will give you a list of exemptions to choose from. Now I'm going to go ahead and click next and this will bring me to the computation of tax. So in this example, I'm going to do line 16, which is total consideration of residential dwelling. And I'm going to do like uh, $450,000 in there. And as you can see, the cool thing about my Connect, it does all the calculation for you. Once you put the figures in there, the necessary figures, as you can see, the middle column, the rates is uh, 0 0.0075, and then it does the calculation. And as you can see at the uh, line 20, it says uh, now I'm owed $3,375 total state tax due. And the top of the page also display the amount that's due. Now I'm going to go ahead and click next. 
and I'm in the attachment section. So if you do need to attach any document uh, to send to DRS, you can do so by clicking on the add attachment, scan your PDF copy um, or Word document, and then just send that for your information to with your filing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click next, and this will bring me to my payment page. It enters the amount for me. You bring it over from the previous page. So now I'm going to go ahead and enter confirm the dollar amount. And as you can see here, I have um, I used the system before, so I have bank accounts that saved. But I will I do not want to use these bank accounts. So what I'm going to do is click on use a new payment channel, and then in the drop down I'll say direct payment. Enter my routing number. Enter my bank account. Confirm the bank account number and it's a savings account and then it asks me again if i wanted to save it for future i will say no to that and then i click next now i'm on the confirm submission terms and conditions now as you can see here it says enter your signature so basically what i'm going to do is just enter my name as the signature and i do wanted to point out that the payment is not going to the bank so for example, if you file the OP236 form today and you initiate a payment, the payment only goes to the bank when the town clerk uh, review and approve your OP236 filing. Once they do that, so maybe like, you know, two weeks from now, if they go in in their system and approve the OP236 at that time, that's when we will send the money to the bank to come out. All right, so I enter the signature and it's also required who is signing the return. So I'm gonna say grantor's attorney and it put the dates in there for me and now I click submit. Once I click submit, as you can see here, there's a confirmation number for you. You also get a confirmation number in the email that was sent to your personal email that when you set up the account. It tells you here, the amount of direct payment will be 3,375 and only initiated after successfully recording of the instrument of the town clerk's office. There is a printable view, so you can print this for your record if you like. And don't worry, if you miss that, you can always come back and go under the submission panel and able to view that print copy. And I'll show you how to get there. So let me close this one out. And as you can see on the print copy, the PDF copy, we do have us nicely break out all the different line items that was entered, uh, all the computation of tax and some demographic information. So let's say, for example, you mistakenly close, close this out and then you, oh, I, I do need a copy. Don't worry. You can go under find a submission. Now you're back on the main screen here. You click, click find a submission and under pending, you will see the OP236 form here that you just submitted. Because you just submitted the form and the town clerk did not have the opportunity to review it yet, you have the options of deleting the submission continue editing, or you can withdraw the application and start over, or you can print a copy and this will bring the same PDF copy for you. Now I'm gonna get back to the main screen here and I'm gonna log out as the submitter. And now I'm gonna go in as the town clerk and show you how the process works. So I'm gonna go ahead, log out from the submitter Ask me if I wanted to log out. Yes. And now I'm going to log in as, in as a town clerk. So what I did was I filed the OP236 as the submitter and I send it now waiting for the town clerk to log in in their system and to either reject or approve the OP236. I already create a username and password for the town clerk. So I'm going to simply enter that information in here. And then I'll enter my password. And I'm gonna go ahead and click login. Then again, when you log in for the first time as the town clerk, the same procedure, you'll have the two-step verification. You can add the phone number, email, or you can add the authentication app. It's optional, then you can just disable it. And don't worry if you, let's say if you wanted to set it up again, you go under my profile when you log in 
uh, right here and then you can set that up. I do wanted to show you quickly right here under my profile and set it up again. And as a tongue clerk, you can update your name, a contact name, email address, phone number, and uh, change your password and the security questions as well. The way how the process works is under manage my profile, there is an action center right here. So the tongue clerk, when they log in, they will get they will get notification says, hey, Randy from the tongue, from Plainfield file OP236 and waiting for your approval. They also will get an email in their inbox saying that there is um, a OP236 waiting for you to look at, to review and approve. So that's a good thing. That's, you know, it's a good thing the system is working like that because instead of you logging in there every two weeks, but when you get the notification in your email, that's when you log in and you looked at the OP236. Now I logged in as the tongue clerk, and as you can see, these are my panels right here. I can send a secure message to DRS. Um, I can view messages or I can find prior submissions. And over here, it will say review OP236 returns because you know you're in, you're now logged in as a tongue clerk and you're not filing the return, but you're reviewing the return. So I'm going to go ahead and click on review OP236 and I'm going to look for the return that I just sent through. And as you can see, um, there's different search options in here. You can search by uh, date recorded, date conveyed, confirmation number, grantor's name. We can make it easy for you to do searches in here. Or if let's say if this is my first time filing and this is the only one waiting for pending verification, it will display in the bottom here. And as you can see, it says my grantor's name is Randy Tess. If you remember the OP236 that I filed earlier. And as you can see, the pending verification, it says there's a, a hyperlink here that says review return. So I'm going to go ahead and click review return as the tongue clerk. And this is the OP236 I'm looking at. It tells the balance due on the top, all the different information that the uh, submitter uh, sent through. Um, now the tongue clerk do not have any options to make any changes to these fields. The only option that the tongue clerk um, need to look at, um, I mean, to can make any changes is if they scroll all the way to the bottom of the return. This is where they will enter their information to either approve or reject. If I'm a tongue clerk now, I logged in, I saw Randy's OP236 return, and I was like, this guy didn't file it correctly or something is missing. I can simply say reject, put a reason in here, and simply ask them to um, file a new return and send back a new one to us. And then once they click reject, put a re re reject reason and click submit. Then the submitter will notify in their email inbox saying, hey, you got a response from the Tom Clark to log in into your profile and check it out. And once they log in into their profile, they will see the reject reason in there and then they will file, you know, make the corrections and send in a new OP236 to the Tom Clark. Or the tongue clerk can say, everything looks perfect on this return. We're going to enter the land record and the volume page number. By doing so, we're going to go ahead and click approve. And then I'm going to go ahead and enter that land record volume, date recorded, and then enter the land record page, click approve, and then I click submit. Once I click submit, the tongue clerk will get a confirmation number you know, display of all the information that was just entered by them. They can also click on the printable copy for their records, which will give them a PDF copy. And as you can see, it says tongue clerk copy on the top. Everything looks good. And then again, if they lost the PDF copy, don't worry, the tongue clerk can always go back in to find a submission and they will be able to see the OP236 here again, and if they click on it, they will get the option to print another copy. Okay, so that complete the filing of the OP236 return. Um, you know, as I stated earlier, there's two parts to it. It started with the uh, submitters to file the OP236 and then complete the filing uh, with the tongue clerk on the tongue clerk's end to either approve or reject the filing. That's all I have for today, and thank you all for listening. Back to you, Mr. Carter.
All righty. Thank you very much, Randy. Well done. Excellent indeed. All right, folks. So uh, we're coming down the home stretch. So right now I'm going to give you a very brief tour of the Taxpayer Education Center, which is found halfway down on the DRS homepage, which is located at portal.ct.gov forward slash DRS. Now, the Taxpayer Education Center was actually created through the lens of a Connecticut taxpayer, and it provides informational videos and other educational resources like registration for any upcoming webinars, new business flyers for sales tax, my Connect, and several other uh, tax matters, tax issues that are out there. And we have two video series out there as well. One is for Connecticut residents filing and paying Connecticut income tax. And the second series is for part year and non-residents filing and paying Connecticut income tax. Then we have videos that are specific to navigating our website. And at the very bottom, you can find any previously recorded webinars, including in about a week's time, the recording of this webinar. Videos are periodically added and updated and are always there to provide a quick and easy walkthrough of any topic that is being presented. All righty then, I told you that would be brief. That ran about a minute, maybe a minute 15. Okay, so that's gonna do it for today, folks. We certainly hope that you see the benefits of my CT rec and we shed some light on any real estate conveyance issues you may have. If you have any questions in the future about real estate conveyance or any other Connecticut tax issue, you can certainly chat live with one of our specialists by dialing 860-297-5962. We can also be reached at 1-800-382-9463. If you want to send us an email, go for it. Our email address is drs at ct.gov. I'll plug the website one more time so you guys can give it some love and going out there and visiting. I'm sure you know the address by now. I've probably said it a dozen times. It's portal.ct.gov forward slash DRS. And please, by all means, we are on social media as well. So go out there and friend us and subscribe, whatever it is you have to do on any of these sites. But we're on Facebook, X, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube as well. Our business hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. On behalf of my fellow presenters and DRS and everyone behind the scenes that helped us, including Barbara, Melanie, and Suzanne, thank you very much for taking time out of your day to join us today, and we'll see you at the next webinar.